been a privilege and honor to have been taught my trade, which built my skill career by the sacrifices and with the integrity of all the veterans, my supervisors, other journeymen, and fellow apprentices during my 15 years in naval ship repair. The time shared with the active duty personnel working together to keep our fleet in tip-top shape encouraged my understanding of why we are a nation with freedom and open dreams that can be reached with our own hard work. Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to my job shop. My name is Keith and I'm here repairing America one project at a time or building something new like the radar mast that we got set up here now on the milling machine. And the reason why I brought you in here is I wanted you to see how I can precisionally align, set, level, square, and tack up the framework for the structure so that the mast, when it's put on the roof <laughs> of the, the boat, the, um, the piece looks like it's straight in line, not hanging off to one side or tilted or twisted or anything else. Before I brought this base in here and started assembling it, I brought my level over and double checked, made sure that the mill and machine was still uh, level from the time that we put it here on the floor and set it up. And it was darn close. I did a little tweak, but uh, it just made it so that it had a purple, perfect bubble. All right. This is a new quarter inch bottom piece that we've we've created here same whole pattern of things we put it on here that went down here and we finished cutting the rest of our stiffeners or ribs for the structure here and we're up here to number three which just above number two it in, in uh, uh, holds the spreader the lower spreader in position so this top one here, that's the next piece we're going to be tacking and we're just kind of looking at center line, square and all of that. We were able to draw center line on that rib there between front and back and the twist is it's in there just like that or it's square to that axis and it looks good on the level that way. It also looks good on the level this way here and this rib also looks like it's within the tolerances that we're shooting for both directions there. So we're going we're gonna to go ahead and tack that one and we're going to move on up until we get to the upper um, arm here. Since we did the spreaders in the last video, um, I dressed off the ends and then knocked off the keeper rings on the end because when I, I'm not going to weld this in here just yet and if I want to move it or whatever, I want to be able to pull it out and those pieces kept it from going past here because they were a little bit fatter on the, on the, around the large tube there. Um, everything else is looking good. I've got a plumb bob string down here and a square off the table. So I'm actually eyeballing the square with even in the center of the T-nut slot here. This blue laid out line that's in our center, which is in the center of the T-nut slot there. And the string hangs from the center of the line here. And I eyeball all three pieces up there. It was slightly off to that side and I had to do a little bit of tweak. So I did have to move it. And I am controlling it and I'm keeping an eye on it. And that's kind of keeping my vertical in line this way here. Uh, level and square, we'll keep it off that direction there. All right, we're gonna get back to it. I just wanted to bring you in, show you how I was setting this up and how I was working it. In the last video, people made comments of how am I cleaning my aluminums and everything else. Uh, and of course, I have, in, you look at my earlier videos, where I'm doing a welding, like on the spool, uh, center spool uh, fitting for the hydraulic crane that I've rebuilt and everything else. I, I do talk that I clean things with acetone. I didn't really think that you guys needed to see that I actually clean with acetone, um, but that's how I do keep the oil and whatnot off of there or remove all the dye printing that's on the plates and stuff like that. It kind of does it all in one shot. But yes, I do wipe down, I make sure that all my welding areas are oil free and uh, just like I dross free you know that dross from the plasma cutter um, also will make a weld dirty just like 
on the lathe when I'm welding on the mill, I put the clamp right on the part or the chuck that's holding the part. Right now it's clamped to the toe clamp that's holding the part down to the table. My little vice over here now is my torch hanger. <laughs> uh. I just want to see. Okay, that's still, that holds it in there nice and firm. I like that. No place or no wiggle room to go in there. And we're going to finish. We're going to start going on up there. Before I decide to tack and weld this one in, I want to have both of them in place before I do that. All right, this is the number six, and the upper spreader sits on this, and then seven comes down and sits on top of that. I now have brought both, this is the second spreader, this is the top spreader here. We've already completed the bottom spreader up to the point where these panels, top and bottom, are rosette welded on here. Now I've got these two here to rosette weld on this side here. But I want to bring you in so that you can see the penetration we're getting on the rosette welds on the underside. And then we'll give you an example of rosette welding these in from the outside. Okay, it's probably going to just work as well with me holding this up here, um, there, 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 and a little one there. Every one of them shows signs of penetration, but these ones right here in the center really kind of show you the grab, the rivet style head on there. 
showing you the grab of the penetration we're getting from the top side. Zoomed in on one rosette that we're gonna weld and fill. And you're gonna see me hold the arc and I'm gonna hold it until it actually rolls the top plate down in and merges with the lower plate. And I can get the, the lower plate to actually glow in the center at the same time. There, it went down and caught. Now I just add a little bit there. I roll it around so that it will fill and join just like that. You got to add some material on the top and then let off slowly so it's minimum crater right there. I played around and it doesn't, we did the first one here, the second one here, but I played around, you know, picking and choosing where I wanted to have them uh, or the order. And I don't really believe it makes a difference on any of the orders. Okay, so now the next thing will be wiping it down with acetone, setting up here, getting real comfortable, um, and going ahead and putting our well beads all along the outside of the skin that we just attached to the frames by the rosette welds. We just finished our spreaders as far as welding the skin on it sanding the, the welds down to where they're flush here. We kind of gave them a scotch bright all around the whole edge. We put them on up here so we got a good visual of it in here and we're happy with where we're at. Now we need to start prepping how we're joining the forward and aft tubes in the spreaders to the vertical tubes in the mast itself for wire chasing. And uh, so, I've got to dismantle this and we've got to set up the K and T and we're going to be doing some boring on our spreaders and into the tubes on this frame. So we can remove the skin now and we can go set that out of the side, out of way. And this should just lift off now, right? Oh, it's probably a little tight on the sides here. Yeah, that's what it is. Okay, now this tacked together on the top, so it may. Okay, I got it loose there. Let's see if we can get this side here loose. That gives it a new look, right? 
<laughs> so we'll be coming across here with a straight tube and we'll be coming across here with a straight tube and then we're going to have an exit on this back side here because we're going to have an anchor light coming up like this and we got to have an access tube here and then that tube's going to pass all the way through here because our array sits out here on a platform with an eight degree tilt. It's what the uh, customers requested. And then either in line with this or slightly above this, I'm going to have another tube access here because we're going to have the Starlink up above the swing of the boom on the array. And then we have a top plate that will mount on the top for the Fruno unit that we're going to put up there. I'm totally psyched now. All right, until the next video, get her done.